This really is a fast moving story and we are bringing you the very latest from two people in charge of the investigation. I spoke with the RCMP commanding officer and the chief of Regina's police service late tonight. Saskatchewan RCMP commanding officer Rhonda Blackmore and Chief Evan Bray of Regina Police Services, uh, thank you both for joining us. What, what an extraordinary uh, and difficult day this has been. We have a lot of questions for you. Assistant Commissioner, you, when you told everyone earlier that Damien Sanderson had been found dead, not of self-inflicted wounds, what is the operating theory on what happened? So at this point in time, we do believe that someone other than himself inflicted the wounds that resulted in his death. Um, who exactly inflicted those wounds, we can't say at this point in time. That's still part of the investigation. His body was located this afternoon, so um, as we're still working through that investigation, we'll process that information and be able to have those answers. Was his body found in a unique site, or were there other uh, bodies there at the same time? His body was located within a crime scene site that had already started to be processed, but he was found uh, in tall grass and uh, in a bush area uh, a little bit away from a residence. And so now we understand that, that Miles Sanderson, his brother, is the person who was probably in that vehicle seen here in Regina. Do you believe he's injured? And if so, what does that suggest to you? We do believe that there is a possibility that Miles Sanderson is injured. Um, given that, we expect that he will either have to seek medical treatment or have someone assisting him who's providing some sort of medical treatment for any injuries he may have sustained. And, and that's important because? Well, because those, those persons, if someone is helping him, those persons have information that they can provide to police that can lead to the successful conclusion of this file and apprehending Miles and taking him into custody. And Chief Bray, your confidence level is still high that he's here? Well, I mean, you know, I think we've been talking about this for a while. The, mm -hmm. the last reliable information we had was that he was in this city uh, and we are confident about that. Now, lots of time has passed since we've had new information. Um, so we're operating under the impression that he is here. We're taking all of the precautions. Our investigative efforts though are really focused on trying to determine where he is. Our investigators are working collaboratively with the RCMP investigators. And so the second we get information that suggests otherwise, that obviously will focus the investigation outwards. But we haven't been able to get any new information that leads us anywhere but the city of Regina. That's the most recent info we have. And nothing to suggest a, another car? Well, not at this point. I mean, there's been lots of, of what I'll call swirl on social media, mm -hmm. but every one of those leads we've investigated and we've been able to rule out that information. So it is very possible, uh, but it's it's also possible that he could have left the city in the same car, despite the fact that, you know, I mean, we've been working aggressively on this for the last in excess of 24 hours, but um, you know, there's lots of factors at play here, and so we're, we're hoping we can pin down some information in the next while, certainly this evening, that will give us a better location. All right, and, and if, we, if we step back from, I know you're looking at these important details, but if we pull back for a moment, this is a very different crime from a mass shooting, is it not? Well, the fact that stabbing was the, the method, at least, of the, the first individuals who were killed, you know, that's a very personal crime. Um, that is different than a, a crime at a distance that may involve a firearm, something mm -hmm. such as that. So there are certainly behavioral indicators there when someone has that uh, sort of up close and personal interaction that results in serious injuries or death to someone. Does it also suggest that, that the person, you know, committing that crime sometimes has to have a relationship with that person to get close enough to do that to them? In, in some cases, that is the situation, but you know there are other times. This, you know, depending on uh, the mindset of the individual, or if if there was some sort of substance-induced behavior, that can certainly dramatically change an individual's behavior when it comes to that type of crime. Do you have any indication of that substance abuse on the part of either one of them? We don't have any information on that at this point in time. Um, you know, we do know that substance abuse is an issue within this province and there are multiple crimes committed that involve persons who uh, have consumed illicit drugs and so you know, it is a possibility but we can't confirm that at this point. Assistant Commissioner Chief Prey, I know you're exhausted I also know you're not going to sleep. 
Yeah, it's been one of those days and, and you know we've said right from the start this doesn't stop until we locate Miles and even then the investigation and the search for the suspect stops but there's so much follow-up investigation not to mention a lot of healing that has to do in this province in this country. Indeed. Thank you both very, very much. Thank you. Thanks.